Hey, what's going on guys? You guys should know who it is by now. It's Jeff Mate. You're all in time for some more tech news. First off, the iPhone tanks, you know, that's the big new thing. Everybody's gonna be dropping and breaking, so might as well need to talk about how much it's gonna cost to repair the dang thing. Since the iPhone 10 went on sale last Friday, Apple mentioned some things about the prices for repairing, and of course, it's Apple, so it's gonna be a little expensive, like the phone itself. If you don't extend the warranty, it'll cost you a whole, whole whopping $279. That is more than two times the price of an iPhone 6 screen replacement, which was $129 and was about 65% higher than the new iPhone 8 which cost $169 for a screen replacement. This was spotted by Mac rumors at first so you should be extra little careful with the iPhone 10 if you get one. All out of other warranties will co repair will cost $549 and not surprisingly that it costs more than the repair of the other iPhones. The iPhone 8 repair costs $349, and the 8 Plus will cost $399 to repair. So if you end up cracking the back of the new iPhones, you just might want to learn to live with it. Apple's warranty costs $199 for the iPhone 10. The warranty for the iPhone 8 will cost $129, and $149 for the iPhone 8 Plus. So the iPhone 10 under warranty can get the screen repaired for only $129, and the and it still can get a $99 repair for anything under Apple Care Plus too. If you happen to crack the and replace the screen twice while under warranty, it'll end up costing you $257, which is still cheaper than the under warranty price. So, okay, now the screen replacement. This screen replacement repair, that's still $279. I understand it's almost bezel-less phone. Like there's literally barely any bezels on it. And I understand it's Apple, so it's going to be expensive and it's a higher quality brand, but $279 just for a dang screen? Come on, guys. What happened to it being like a hundred repair the whole thing? Like, repair the whole screen. Now it's like almost triple that. What are we going to do? I don't know. Since we talked about the screen replacement and how much it costs, might as well put some more positivity into it. Now we're going to be talking about some of the new features on the iPhone 10. Here are some of the new features on the iPhone 10. They changed the uh, notification settings, so now the iPhone 10 will automatically hide notification previews on the lock screen by default. Now iOS has the option to hide notification previews on the lock for a while now, allowing you to show generic notification titles like iMessage instead of showing the message that was sent, but it was an optional feature enabled so people weren't nosy and read messages or any other notifications. Unlocking with the iPhone 10 with Face ID will reveal the notification preview in their normal form, which Wired stated it's also a helpful way to confirm that Face ID has unlocked the device. So what do you guys think? Do you think it's nice that it comes stock now so you guys don't have to go into settings? Or would you guys go into settings and turn it off when you first get the iPhone 10? If you do get one, or even if you don't, what's your opinions on it? Comment down below. Since we talk so much about iPhone the past couple videos and we we're just talking about some more so let's move into Intel some more but this time it's not about their CPUs or anything like that it's about their SSDs Intel's new Optane SSDs are finally coming to PCs the newest one will be called Optane SSD 900p they are supposed to be very fast according to Intel the sequential read speeds are up to 2500 megabytes per second and sequential write speeds up to 2000 megabytes per second. So, if you are not up to date with the SSD technology, Optane is Intel's branding for products that use their 3D X point memory, which it claims offers denser storage than DRAM while being dramatically faster than the OG NAND RAM SSD. The Intel says that Optane chips are so fast they can actually complement the RAM already in your computer for a single giant tool of memory and a bigger lower cost than buying a couple hundred gigabytes of DRAM. They released a smaller M.2 Optane memory stick and 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes capacities earlier this year to make existing hard drive and offer speeds closer to a SSD. But for a full 3DX point powered SSD, the offerings were limited to Optane DCP4800X which costs around $1,500. The 
P4800X is designed for server and enterprise use though. Not for your custom PC game rig, the Optane SSD P100, 900P, my bad, will be available in two storage ca capacities, a 280GB model for $389, and it is available for either an HHL or U.2 for factors, and there will be a 480GB model for $600 which only comes in the HHL form factor. So, why would we, honestly, a regular SSD, I've been using a regular SSD, I'm not gonna probably get a PCIe lane SSD unless I'm, you know what, big, when I'm big and can afford it. I'm not gonna throw one of those things in, because those are ridiculously fast. So it's nice to have one, sure, but although the price point of those, those get expensive and you, quite frankly, I feel like just getting a regular SSD is better and it's 10 times faster than a hard drive already and I'm not going to get a hybrid because there's just been issues with those from the past and those are basically becoming legacy based so that's why I'm going to stick with my regular OG SSD that's in here. Well I also have a hard drive but still I'm going to stick with SSDs because they're faster. So I'm sure you heard about Bitcoin and how the GPUs were spiking in price because of Bitcoin mining one now. Let's bring you some more information about Bitcoin and what, where it's at now. Bitcoin, which for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a virtual currency. And according to Bloomberg, it peaked at $6,649.33 about 1634 G GMT on Wednesday. The total value of Bitcoin is in circulation is $110 billion at, dollars at the moment. And the current cryptocurrency has risen more than sevenfold against the dollar over the past year. Bitcoin launched in January of 2009. It's a lower than $100 in June 2013, then below 1000 as close as jo January. In August, it went to $3,451 after a spinoff Bitcoin Cash failed, but failed to prove as disruptive as they had been feared. In September, Bitcoin across the 5,000 threshold for the first time. Gerlich Heilman, a researcher at University of Ca Cambridge, told the BBC, it wouldn't be surprised me if the price were to go even higher. Those Coinbase is a business that lets the public trade and store digital currencies reports that it is now signing up between 35,000 to 50,000 users new users per day. Now that's a lot per day. Mr. Hyman said that many people had recently been attracted to investing in Bitcoin because when the fork happened in August, investors received the equivalent amount of the Bitcoin cash for coins for free. So, cryptocurrency, mining, everything's just but I heard there's a limit on how much there is, so I'm not going to be surprised if here in the next year Bitcoin's gone because Bitcoin, it wasn't really this big until summer, to be honest with you guys. Everything just started spiking, especially with GPU prices, because, you know, everybody uses those for my end. Oh my goodness, guys. Cannot. That's why I still have a 962 gig in here, is because I couldn't afford to get one because the prices were spiking up and I just wanted to budget one. But eventually I'll get a 9, I mean, 9, 960. I already have a 960. I'm going to get a 1060. What do you guys think I should get? A 1060, 1050 Ti? Maybe a 1070, depends on when I buy it, probably within the next year. Comment down below. So, we haven't talked about the Xbox One for a while, and so let's talk about it. So, the Xbox One is known for 4K gaming. Well, it turns out that that's not the only way to get greater resolution. The Xbox One X will also natively support 1440p monitors. It was confirmed by Microsoft's Kevin Gamel. On Twitter, for those who like to proprietary frame rate when gaming, usually stick around 1440p displays. I don't foresee it having that the Xbox One X will focus a lot on support for 1440p displays. In theory now, the Xbox One X could also support variable frame rate on FreeSync monitors, even though nothing has been announced to that effect, which the PS4 Pro supports 1080 or 4K output and the latter only works with 4K screens. This means that if you 
play a 4K or 1440p game on a PS4 Pro hooked up to a 1440p monitor, it will just output 1080p and upscale, which doesn't look too pretty, guys. There was probably isn't going to be much people that are playing the Xboxes in the, a PC monitor, but it is still a nice and thoughtful move by at Microsoft. So, if you guys use a monitor for gaming, like a PC gaming monitor, I know my uncle used to do it, and he would have his computer hooked up to it, and his Xbox, so all you have to do is click over there and click channel, change the channel like I have to do with my Raspberry Pi. It's very nice, but I don't see a lot of people doing that. A lot of people just have a dedicated TV for it, or just playing their living room on their living room TV. So, would you guys ever get a gaming monitor that's 1440p since it might be cheaper than buying a nice new big 4K TV? Comment down below on that too. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this video, you know what to do. Hit, give it a huge thumbs up. Get subscribed down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.